So tonight we're going to image uh, asteroid 3122, also named Florence. It's a near-Earth object that's going to come flying by. It's going to be moving very rapidly. It's going to be about uh, 20 times the Earth to moon distance away. And I think it's about two and a half miles across. So it's a pretty good chunk, chunk of rock. Uh, no danger of hitting us, though. At least not tonight. For an asteroid like this, we will take uh, probably very short shots. It's going to be moving, like I said, around 20 arc seconds per minute, which means if I take a shot of more than three or four seconds, it's going to be a streak because it's, it's moving that rapidly. So I'll take very short shots, uh, and then we'll uh, take those in the house, and we'll measure them up with some software called Astrometrica, and we'll send those results off to uh, the Minor Planet Center up at Harvard and to a program I'm working with uh, called Target Asteroids at the Univers University of Arizona, a citizen science program. First, we have to synchronize the clock. Synchronize the clock on the PC with the National Bureau of Standards. Because the asteroids we are trying to position require uh, the time to be very accurate to get a proper position. Probably especially on this one because it's going so fast. It's, yes. And sitting out here in the heat for two weeks not, without being used, the time apparently drifted enough that it was off by almost four seconds. So the asteroid is at one point and you're thinking it's at some other point. Yes, and it will not be well. When I, when I measure the positions, they'll be garbage. I cannot turn those into the to the uh, minor planet center. My my observations at that point will become outliers. This is the ephemeris or the predicted positions of the asteroid as provided by the minor planet center. And as you can see, it's changing very rapidly every five minutes. I've I've uh, asked for a solution, so we're going to try to. Catch it on one of these, and we've got a telescope to go there right now. Most likely stalled because I had the auto guider turned on. So this is now pointed at the asteroid. It should be. What we're going to do is re-resynchronize our uh, turn on our auto guider and have to take a fresh image of where it's pointing. We're now going to plate solve, which means we've just taken a short exposure, and we're going to have the software tell us where we're pointing. What we have here now is we fed the uh, image we just took into the astrometric software, which is the software we'll use to determine the exact position of the asteroid, and has now identified its reference stars, and it has matched up for my image to the catalogs of known reference stars. And now, just for fun, we're going to lay on top of this uh, what it thinks are all the known asteroids in this field of view, and hopefully 3122 Florence is going to be in here. It's got bit by mosquito. And there it is, bingo. And that is it right there. There's our asteroid. Cool. It's, it's a pretty good curve. 34 too. to 5 signal noise. We got we got a good and that was a five second exposure and it's still pretty round. So now what we're gonna do is uh, set up and take a series of exposures and actually watch this asteroid trail across the field of view. What is it now? Uh, six minutes ahead. So I want to, it'll take a second to get this all set up. So we're going to go to 940. So you're going to put the scope where the asteroid will, will be? be in uh, six minutes. Okay. So you're it is good to go to. It didn't go very far, as you could tell by the sound of the motors. Yeah, I didn't even hear a sound of the motor. So the scope just moved very slightly to where the asteroid will be. Right. I'm going to re-engage uh, re the auto guider. Let it get rid of all the backlash and all the garbage. We're going to take a real quick exposure. Feed it to the uh, plate solver. 2.7 uh, arc minutes, so we're going to recenter the scope. Do this again. So to, move? to give you some scale, I mean, we're, we're looking at things that are uh, arc seconds and fractions of arc seconds. An arc second is the angle subtended by a dime at two and a half miles. So think of, of that as how accurately we're able to uh, measure the asteroid positions. <laughs> so that's why when this scope moves to adjust itself a little bit, you know, we don't even notice. Right. 
Now, so now you need to confirm that you're where you think you are? Yes, we're going to take a real quick shot here. Is it trying to solve? It's doing a plate solve, yes. A plate solve in by itself is a pretty unique process. It uses a catalog of triangles, you know, triangle formations of stars of a very precisely known position, and it will try to match these up. You give it your image scale and all, all the other parameters that's needed to where it can and basically, in, in the math, superimpose your image on these known uh, triangles and uh, with, of, of precisely known position that will tell you then where you are. And that's like right in the middle of the frame too. Yeah, this will be a good series here. <laughs> Nicely done. You mean the exposure length was four seconds? No, the, uh, yes. I think it was four seconds. I want to go with three. And we're going to say, okay, and we're going to tell it to do this for like, uh, five minutes. And now we wait. Blank images. So this is blinking that set of five? See it moving? Oh yeah, cool. So that's it right there, just yep. chugging away. Those are 15 seconds apart. That thing is moving fast. Wow, that's booking it. 15 seconds between yep. frames? Those are five frames, 15 seconds apart. That's one minute of, one minute of movement. So if that's a minute, I mean, it literally would only take 20 minutes to go all the way across the field of view, right? right. Which is why I had to print out detailed data every five minutes. This is cool. I, I didn't. Uh, what I want to do is stop the blink, and I want to. I want to go back over here real quick before we get too excited. I want to open up one of these pictures. They're pretty round. Uh, slightly, not quite round. But that's everything. That's so everything. that's that, that's, that's a tracking, that's a not a that's a guiding issue. Yep. That's not a the asteroids moving issue. That's right. a the scope's moving issue. Right. I want to I want to re reposition the scope here, and we're going to do this again. We did twenty last time, so forty. It's like Xylef. Oh, we're done. Oh, we're done. Yeah. Cool. So do we get to see a blink? It's going to take. Hours to set up the blink. You saw how much long it took last time. Yeah, we're going to blink four <laughs> images. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> time for post. Post. <laughs>